everyone. Thank you for joining us online here at Destiny. If you haven't had a chance to visit our campus, we would love for you to come out and join us for our 1030 service. But if you can't, you can always watch us online at destinyokc.com. And while you're there, you can watch any of our past messages, see any of our upcoming events, or read pastor's blogs. Also, don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms right here. And now, here's this week's message. Hetty Green is the name you may not know. She's known as, the, uh, as America's greatest miser. How many of you do not want that to be your legacy? <laughs> the, America's greatest miser. Uh, I've done quite a bit of research on her when I found this all out. Uh, she actually died in 1916, and she left over $100 million behind in 1916 and yet she was known as America's greatest miser how can you be that rich in that particular time when so many people are so destitute and desperate and be known as America's greatest miser so her story is elaborate I won't go into too much of it other than just to say she was so tight with her money just keeping it as, as well as she possibly could. She ate her oatmeal cold in the morning because she didn't want to spend the money that it cost to heat up her oatmeal. Her son was injured, and though she had plenty of money for the best health care money could have bought, she delayed his procedure so long in search for free health care, for a free clinic, that his leg had to be amputated. I mean, it is outrageous when I started looking at all the details of her story. And what really blew me away as I just started thinking about this, it is absolutely crazy for someone who had so much to think the benefit of having so much is to keep it well. How many of you are blessed? We are so blessed. You know, by this nation's standards, we're so blessed. By international standards, we're crazy, crazy blessed. This is part of the benefit of um, the missions trips that uh, we've been taking out and about uh, this year. And I know Randy and Megan, I just want to say how much we love and appreciate you guys. And we are so thankful for you opening our eyes to a greater revelation, a truer understanding of a worldwide platform around us that many of us never pay attention to. So come on, let's give it up for Randy and Megan, missions directors. Thank you guys so much. We are very blessed. Everybody say, I'm blessed. It's really true. And it is utterly crazy for you to be so blessed and come to any kind of conclusion that the goal is to keep it well. The purpose of finance in our lives is actually to explore the generous nature of God and the way we walk this out in our everyday lives. As the seed of Abraham, you do realize you and I, uh, Father Abraham has many sons and daughters and here we are gathering to worship today. We are the expression of the lineage of the blessing of God that entered into this world to awaken something of God's kingdom. We have a phenomenal privilege and responsibility to share the goodness of God and His prosperous kingdom with a fallen, broken, destitute, desperate, in need of God's love world around us. That's who we are. And uh, we want to learn how to do that in our everyday lives, in our work life, in our neighborhood life. And e everywhere we go, we bring God's presence to real life. We hear it all the time. So we take very seriously our mission as a church family um, and as a leadership team to inspire and empower God's people to become outrageously loving people. Have you heard this before? Who passionately pursue the Lord. Why don't we all say this together? It's going to pop up on the screen and say this with me. Let's, let's declare it. We are outrageously loving people who passionately pursue the Lord with irrationally giving lifestyles as we consistently submit to God's desires and effectively disciple others to do the same. That is our mission. And 
you can see on your seats, if you would, just pick up these cards. We've got them every other seat. We want to make sure um, our team that comes in to clean up afterward, they don't need to pick these back up. Uh, you take them with you. Put them somewhere that you'll be reminded because what you see on this is our theme this year. We are awake. We're spiritually awake and we're spiritually engaged. We're not just aware of the truth. We're implementing the principles into practices. So I just asked if we could put these out today, and you can see on the back of this, these are the five core values that we just went through. And beneath them are the ten core practices that help us produce those core values in God's people. And so I'm not going to go through all those. We focused on those in the first 40 days. Sometimes we just need a reminder. But I believe God really does want to awaken something within us that actually has the power to transform the world around us because we are walking in such spiritual health that we're impacting the atmosphere, the spiritual climate of the lives of those around us. Now, we had uh, a story, we've been sharing it this morning, but just something so simple last week. Somebody came in, they were having such a difficult weekend, they walked in on Sunday morning, one week ago today, and uh, it, they were just, quite honestly, dealing with just personal uh, circumstances This felt just so heavy and devastating. They, they basically came in the building and said, Lord, I just need your touch. And before they ever got in here to sing any song or hear any sermon, they walked up to the coffee bar and they said, the person at the coffee bar, I did not know their name, but they knew my specific drink order because they remembered me from being there. And they, before I got to the bar, they made my drink and they handed it to me, called me by name and gave me my specific drink. And that person said, I just stood there and began sobbing because I so needed to know that God was reaching into my situation and I felt personally touched by God in that moment. How many of you know it doesn't take much for you to make a difference in the lives of those around us? But we just have to get our minds and our focus off of ourselves. So today, that's what I want to talk about. The title would be Spiritual Health. What is spiritual health? health. Proverbs clearly teaches us as we're studying the book of Proverbs, we're looking at all these principles of personal finance. Proverbs clearly teaches us spiritual health is of greater value than material wealth. Spiritual health is of greater value than material wealth. And so what we're doing is we're reading the chapter with the corresponding date and yesterday's chapter was three, today's four, and next Sunday we'll be focusing on chapters four to 11, so every day read the proverb of the day as a part of your pursuing God. Um, but today what we're going to look at is some, some key text, core text. I had some people catch me in the lobby and say, hey, there wasn't a whole lot of hearts and dollar signs this, these past seven days. Did anybody notice that? We had seven chapters where there wasn't a lot of that. And what I'm talking about, here's a picture of, the, of my Bible, and this is what we're encouraging you to do. As you're reading Proverbs, everywhere you see a heart, just circle or make a heart, and then look to the right margin. You see two dollar signs over there. Those are uh, portions of text that speak about personal finance. Just put a little dollar sign out to the margin. So we're going to read Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. My sons and daughters, people, this is all of us, we're, we're being invited by the Lord into a deeper place. Do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace, they will add to you. I was in the college and career community group before this, listening as they were breaking this down verse by verse and, and just praying into what this all says. And it was so uh, rich just listening uh, to what they were saying. And there's so much in these verses. It's easy just to read them and really not reflect in the deeper reality of what God's desiring to reveal. So Lord, open our hearts to understand, open our eyes and our minds to recognize that which you desire for us to embrace. Verse 3, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God 
and man. How many of you want favor and good success with God and favor and good success with man? This is the kingdom invading the earth where we have favor with God. He then gives us favor with man. Divine appointments, divine alignments, intersections of relationship taking place, maneuvering you into the places where you have interaction and favor and presence with those that God is using to reorganize and restructure and release God's kingdom into the earth in powerful and profound ways. So you'll find favor in the sight of God and man. Verse 5, famous verse, trust in the Lord with all your, there's the word again, heart, and do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats be bursting with wine. I want us to understand as we're talking about uh, what it means to be spiritually healthy, and we're circling, uh, writing, you know, drawing a heart around the word heart and a dollar sign where we see the principles of finance. All of that is significant because how many of you know the Bible is very clear where your treasure is, your heart will go. And so it's key that you understand God's desire is for you to increase in your life and put that increase into kingdom expansion and then your heart will be aligned with kingdom expansion automatically it will result it's just a basic principle that we read in scripture and what this means is the purpose of money in our lives we've talked a little bit about the value of money and i encourage you go to our website and hit the resource tab and 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 walk through those workshops that we've done uh work for money money work for you money work without you what the progression of that looks like in terms of investment and how to buy a house and you know all the things that we're talking about all that's about the value of money but we need to understand not just the value of money we need to understand the purpose of money and God desires for us to comprehend and understand the purpose of money why he wants this to be something that we're bringing before him as an expression of surrender to him I love what Leonard Ravenhill said and before I read his quote I want you just to think how easy it is to live our lives from a temporal disposition like so easy to get inundated and caught up in the system of the world and the way the world thinks but Leonard Ravenhill said this five minutes inside eternity just think about this one day we're going to step into that place of eternity five minutes inside eternity and we will wish we had sacrificed more wept more grieved more prayed more and given more How many of you believe that's true? And the Lord can help us learn to live in light of eternity now. So what we see in Scripture is there are over 500 references to prayer. How many of you think it's important that we pray? We see that there are uh, about 500 references to faith. You know that without faith it's impossible to please God. Like prayer is really important that the Bible would mention it 500 times. Can I get an amen? Amen. Faith is really important that the Bible would mention it 500 times. Amen. Finances must be really important because the Bible references it over 2,000 times. And the reason is because there are these issues of materialism and greed that we know that the world has inundated us with and have to be broken off of our lives. And so God wants to deal with the area, the issue of our heart. I believe it's important that we understand the way we handle our money is probably the truest indicator of our spiritual condition in our lives. I mean, you know it's true. We're, we're wanting to help in this regard. We've got lots of options in this regard. And um, 
I would say that we need to give some consideration to how we can practically step into a greater understanding of managing and stewarding our finances in our personal life. How are we spending? Where are we spending? All of those types of things. How to walk all that out. Uh, and so we're hosting a class that will begin soon. We have limited uh, seating in this particular class, but it's about personal stewardship, similar to Dave Ramsey. But as I said, you don't have to accept Dave Ramsey in your heart to come to the class. Just uh, get signed up in the class, and we'll walk through some principles. And by the way, this is a, a, a commitment that we're asking people to make. So the, when we show up to that class, it's like a 10-week class, I think. Is that right? 10-week class. Uh, they tell me not to tell details because I'm horrible at details, and I get up here and start making up. It's now a 10-week class. Um, and so you'll show up to this class, and what you'll do in that class is you'll actually pay $20 to go to this class, but that $20 you'll be given back to you at the end of the class if you'll just come to the class. And so we're just asking for commitment because the seating is limited. We want to make sure the seats count. And so we're asking people just to um, consider that, but, the, but the, it's limited. So again, connect card, just that connect card and the seat back in front of you. Maybe they can pop up the number that you text uh, to so that you can um, get this online. You can get connected with us if you have an interest, and we'll follow up with you on the details of that. But man, this is such an important principle for us to really walk out and understand. What we've learned when we're reading the book of Proverbs and we're making these little dollar signs is that there are these different categories of how people view money. And I'll give you the seven categories real quick. They're in the blog if you'd like to see them, look at them, evaluate them. But what we see in the book of Proverbs, one, one category is the hoarder. The hoarder believes the more uh, I have, the safer I am. That person tends to hoard. Then there's the spender. And this person says, you know what? Money gives me rewards, so I'm going to splurge on myself because I deserve it. There's the avoider. That's the third category we see as we're reading through Proverbs. And it says, you know, money and bills, they just stress me out. I'd rather not think about it. I definitely don't want to talk about it. I just want to avoid this altogether. Then there's the misinterpreter where money is evil and so we shouldn't have it. That person has misunderstood the scripture. Uh, there's the manipulator. And they, this person thinks, you know what? Money buys me influence and control of, over other people and it'll benefit me if I get money and use it to control other people's lives. That person is a manipulator. There's a bragger. Anyone ever met a bragger before? Uh, we were actually on a, a trip recently, and I bought this great big gaudy, awful, huge ring. It looks like a national championship ring. And I came uh, wearing it into a staff meeting, and I said, I'm trying out for TBN, guys. Um, and so it was kind of a funny joke with, with our staff uh, as I was talking about that and joking with it. But it, I... I, I Anyway, the, the bragger, this is the person that thinks if I can spend money and show you I spend money, then I have a sense of status. But the seventh category that we read about, and we're seeing it in this text, is the giver. And an upside-down world loves money and uses people. That's what an upside-down world does. But a right-side-up kingdom loves God and loves people and uses money to express that. It's important that we understand that and we recognize that. Um, in the same way that we need to wash our clothes, because walking through this world, uh, we, our, our clothes get dirty and need to be cleaned, so is it the case with our thinking. It needs to be cleansed. So walking through this world, uh, materialism easily starts to invade our thinking. Would you agree with me? Walking through this world, it's easy for greed to start to invade our thinking. So we have to cleanse our thinking in the way we're renewing our mind, guarding and protecting our heart, asking the Lord to help us become the people that He's called us to become. This is so important. I, I talked to Tracy about this last week, and just to be honest with you, we in general as a church talk so little about giving that I hear people uh, that come in and they're new to us say to me, you know, you never say anything about giving. How, how do we know how to give? We don't pass buckets. What do we do? And so I, I have to think about that and be intentional about it. And in reverse, when we started down this journey in Proverbs, I guess I wasn't really thinking about just how overt this topic continually is throughout the book of Proverbs. And so I told Tracy last week, I was like, man, I just feel like I'm talking about giving so much. 
And it's because I just don't normally talk about it that much. So bear with me because we need to engage in what the Word of God actually says and not necessarily what we're comfortable with talking about. That would be a great place for everybody to amen, break into thunder supplies. You just want to jump up on your feet. You feel free to do that. But what, what I want us to do is I want us as Christians to explore the whole counsel of Scripture. And so what, what I'm seeing as I'm looking at this, again, that text of Scripture that we read, it says, honor the Lord with, the, with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then blessing will abound, your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will be bursting with wine. So what I have figured out, renewing our mind to the Word of God is a part of this journey of cleansing our mind from the worldly mindset of materialism. But how many of you know God actually put a pattern into place that is an expression of worship that it is ongoing and continually coming back over and over again to break materialism and break greed off of your life, and that is called the tithe. It is just a reality. It's a revelation in Scripture. In fact, what we read in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 23, we understand the purpose. The purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God first in your lives. I mean, you know, in our worship, I said, have we surrendered? And we're more surrendered now than we used to be, Right? I love the Lord, but I love Him more now than I used to love I'm growing in this. The same thing. This is perpetual. I want to love the Lord in every way, on every level of my life. Where I am today, I want to surrender to Him. Where I am tomorrow, how many of you are ready for God just to bring the greatest blessing you've ever seen in your whole life? I mean, we get excited about that blessing, but you have to be faithful with the little things before He entrusts you to the much. So the question isn't, will you do something awesome for the Lord then? The question is, are you being faithful in the moment that you're in? Because every time we increase, we then are supposed to take a portion of that increase and bring it into the storehouse where we are spiritually fed, where our families are spiritually covered, where we experience spiritual nourishment. Are you nourished by God? is that all belong to Him anyway. I mean, it's all His. You didn't have anything when you came into this world. You will have nothing when you go out. He owns it. He loaned it. You have about a century. What are you going to do with what God's entrusted to your care? I don't want to be known as the world's greatest miser. How about you? So I encourage you, uh, we want this to be an act of worship for our church family. And that's why we have giving stations at the back. There's communion there. And we just invite you during worship. We'll receive communion family-wide as well. But that's available every single week just during worship to go back and celebrate the sacrifice of the Lord. Maybe then to step to a giving station and celebrate my sacrifice as a result of following the sacrifice he modeled. If you prefer to give online, you can. Here's our information about how to do that. You can text give to that number or scan the code. Uh, but I just encourage you, let this be an act of worship where you recognize God is doing a great work in your heart and in your life. <sighs> How'd I do? Is that okay? Yeah. Everybody with me? Thank you. I'm so glad you guys came in from Kids Church to affirm me today. This is great. How many of you know it is more blessed to give than to receive. Think about this for a moment. The pursuit of blessedness. What is the, we understand the pursuit of happiness, but what is the pursuit of blessedness? If it is more blessed to give than it is to receive, then the pursuit of blessedness is actually the pursuit of being generous into the lives of those around us. That's the pursuit of blessedness. Now the pursuit of happiness is trying to get everybody else to be generous into my life. Do something for me. How I many know there's some people that pull the wagon? And some people that sit on the wagon while the wagon is being pulled. And so understand that God's actually, we didn't just show up in this building and say, hey, we're just going to, you know, all of a sudden be here in church. Like we worked hard. Many of us sacrificed crazy. Some of y'all came after this building was built. We say, welcome. I'm glad we had what we had when we arrived here, that people sacrificed before us. But I want to tell you there are people coming after us, and they need a church that's given to them that's stronger relationally, financially, theologically, and in every way. That is our responsibility in this 
hour of the church in the pursuit of blessedness, we say we want to see God's kingdom come in power and anointing, and we're willing to sacrifice to see that take place. This is really important that we understand. The pursuit of blessedness is the pursuit of generosity. The pursuit of happiness is the pursuit of getting somebody to be generous to me. But this is what's so crazy. The pursuit of blessedness will actually do more for you than the pursuit of happiness ever could. Like the pursuit of happiness is, I hope I'm happy. But the pursuit of blessedness, because it's more blessed to give than to receive, the pursuit of blessedness actually will do more for you. It's just the design of God. It's the way he set this all into motion in terms of the kingdom of God. I love this, the message paraphrase of Scripture, Proverbs eleven twenty four. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. But the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. What do you think that is? How do you think that works? Just look at your neighbor and give them your best smile. Go ahead. Give them your best smile. See? You know what happens? Like, I was walking through a grocery store one time, and a lady with a horrible scowl on her face grunted at me. She grunted at me. Like, I was in her way. She couldn't see. She was, Ugh. And I remember looking at her thinking, you look scary. Like, and, and, and as I looked at her, I, I just did, it just kind of came out of me. In this moment in time, I, I'm not sure my heart was in the right place, but my words sounded like it. And I just looked at her and I smiled really big and I said, God bless you. And you know what she did? She shook her head, lost her scowl, didn't know how to respond. She said, well, God bless you. <laughs> and I was like, we got in a blessing competition in that moment in time. Like, so into somebody's life with love and generosity and see what might just happen in that situation. It was so crazy. I just remember walking away just laughing, thinking, that is awesome. And, and I think it's true. The world of the generous just gets larger and larger. The more you smile, the more people will respond. Not everybody's going to smile, but don't let them turn your smile upside down. You keep on giving yourself to the generous nature and the loving nature of God Almighty and see just how that might transform the world everywhere you go, bringing God's presence to real life. That is who we are. That is what we do. When we discover our God-given assignment, the world becomes a better place because we are the seed of Abraham and the expression of God's blessing that he has commissioned into the world in which we live. I'm asked the worship team to come. It really is a beautiful truth. It's part of God's right-side-up kingdom. It is our responsibility to bring the full impact of a good God and a prosperous kingdom to a broken, fallen, hurting world in desperate need of knowing God's love. Did you catch that whole statement? I, I want to commission you to this. As a part of of God's right side up kingdom. How many of you are part of God's right side up kingdom? Have you come to the cross of Christ and surrendered your sin before him understanding and acknowledging Jesus is the only way I can access eternity in this world? Do you understand that? Have you come to that place? If you have, say amen. amen. Then as a part of God's right side up kingdom, it then becomes our responsibility to bring the full impact, the full impact of a good God and a prosperous kingdom to a fallen, broken, hurting world in desperate need of God's love. And when you and I, as believers, begin to take the Scripture seriously and decide to live obediently, we then can begin to change the world. How I many you know that's the commission? That's the assignment. Spiritual health. Spiritual health is a greater value than material wealth. But the material wealth that God entrusts to your care is a part of accessing and growing in what it means to be spiritually well. So our action point this week, faith without action is dead. 
We bring God's presence to real life. So your God's presence to real life, GP2RL, action point of the week is simply this. Discuss the purpose of finances and money with your family. Talk about how to honor God in your finances. And let's just stay the course with reading Proverbs chapters 4 through 11 in the course of this next week, noting those principles of personal finance, putting a heart where you read the word heart. I really do want us to grow in the Lord. How about you? I really want God's very best for every single one of us. And I believe this word is the key to accessing that in our hearts. Aren't you thankful that Jesus came, he lived, he died, he gave us access into the presence of God. Come on, let's just stand in God's presence together. Just for a moment, we just stand to our feet in the presence of God. We come boldly into the throne room of God. If you've never accepted Christ, this could be the morning that you make that decision. If you believe in your heart and confess that Jesus is Lord with your mouth, you'll be saved. It's really simple access point that he paid such a great price that we might understand that life. So Lord, we stand in your presence right now. I thank you that through the blood of Christ, we have access. So we recognize that first and foremost. We recognize Jesus came and died, but didn't remain in a grave because Jesus is the Son of God, the sinless sacrifice that was given for our sins. Because of that, Jesus is raised from the grave. If you believe that, say out loud, Amen. Amen. Jesus, you are Lord. I pray that you take us into a deeper place of knowing what it means to stand in your presence, even in the presence of mankind. That the fear of the Lord would outweigh the fear of man. And we would honor you, Lord, in every way. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, if you acknowledge the Lord needs to address some areas in your personal stewardship, why don't you just lift both your hands and let's just surrender that to Him? It's all about a process, but Lord, we just say we understand that material wealth has been entrusted to our care for us to learn how to more effectively access spiritual health. I pray that you'd help us to grow in greater maturity of what that really looks like. The people around us, everywhere we go, would know us as the most generous people they've ever met. Our love and our generosity will mark our lives in the way we live. And in doing so, we're able to share more effectively the love of Christ in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I'm going to ask our prayer teams to come. <clears throat> come on, let's just press in for a few moments. Let's bring back something from what the Lord has placed within our hearts. Let's bring that back to Him in a place of worship. If you made a decision today to accept Christ, then I want to ask you to come and let our prayer teams pray with you. If there's anything that you need us to pray with you about today, then I would invite you in these few moments that we have to worship. Would you just come and let us join together? We believe in the power of prayer. So come on, if there's anything we can agree with you about, make your way up as we just take a few moments before we conclude in worship. I just want...